Good afternoon, tulips. How are you today? It's good to be back. It feels like, Marisa said this last week, it just feels like forever since we were here, but I guess it was last year. <laughs> I'm sorry, bad teacher jokes. Anyhow, I am teacher Michelle and I am really happy to have you joining us today. We are talking about weddings. Weddings, engagements, proposals, flowers, you name it. So I hope you have questions because you have Parker in here running tech with us today. You have teacher Carolyn out in Cyberland today and Marisa is in studio with me. And then you also have Caledonia and Susie answering questions for you. So you have a plethora of experience here. So take advantage of it. I want to do a reminder if you're a tulip. So that means if you're a current student, a past student or a member of the Flower Lovers Club, please put your little tulip emoji in there for us. And let's see what else. Uh, oh, if you're a first timer, Please tell us that because the tulips are very warm and welcoming and we want to let you know that we're glad you're here. So if you're a first timer, just say, hey, it's my first time. It's pretty easy. And oh my gosh, this should have been at the top of my list. I have two shout outs today, two important shout outs. In the mail, I have placed for two people their advanced floral design graduation certificate along with their certified floral designer certificate Ooh. and the gold pin that goes with it. Yeah, we can give a clap for that. <laughs> Who will be receiving these, you wonder? Hmm. Beatrice Dippy. Beatrice Dippy. Beatrice Dippy. And Sherry Tournay. So, so proud of you guys. We were high-fiving in the office. It's like, yes, that's an achievement. That is an investment in yourself which is very important. It's hard, it's hard to spend money on ourselves like this. Yeah, new pair of shoes every now and then, but investing in yourself, that's hard to do, not just financially, but physically, emotionally, it's a lot of work. So major kudos, give them some love out there, tell them congratulations. I just think that could be you next time that we're saying congrats to. So, I'm going to grab a few things. While I do that, do we have anything exciting or anybody new that we can say hello to? I have someone new over oh. here in Facebook land. We have Corinne, and they're from Lintitz, Pennsylvania. Well, well, hello, Corinne. Glad to have you with us. Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's a long ways away, and it sounds really cold right now. So, well, it's not really very warm in Portland, for that matter. No. I think it was 30... 30 this morning when 30. I left the house. Yeah, all, all three zero of it. I was feeling it for sure. <laughs> so we are talking about weddings and engagements and all of that fun stuff. Um, not to get the cart before the horse, but do you know that they're predicting that this will be the biggest year for weddings since 1988? Pretty sure some of you weren't born in 1988. And when I say the biggest year for weddings, think about it. People in 2019, business as usual. 2020, er, slammed the brakes on. Things didn't quite happen as planned. People may have readjusted and moved things to later in 2020 or 2021, but we still had some of those same issues. So 2022 is looking like it might be a really good year to get married for everybody. Any guesses as to what they're predicting for the number of weddings this year? It's a, it's a doozy. It's got a comma. It's got a couple commas. So if you have a guess, poke it in there, type it in, let us know. What was your question? question is how many weddings do they do the oh. predictors think there will be this year oh, because okay. it's a big number big number so when you have weddings before you have weddings you typically have a proposal of some kind and anymore that has really become like a thing uh i mean a proposal is always a thing however it feels like in recent years it's become an over-the-top thing. 
And I thought, okay, well, let's embrace that. Let's address that. Let's talk about what's possible. So the first, um, first little thing I wanted to put together was something to go with the proposal. So could be adapted six ways from Sunday, however you wanted to look at it. I know a lot of you in your shops sell um, wine. You have wine uh, liquor license in addition to uh, doing florals and so forth. Many of you also have chocolates. This happens to be um, sparkling cider because I grabbed it out of the refrigerator here at school and we didn't have any wine in there today. So <laughs> we barely have wine there. Uh, in fact, we don't always, I'm never mind. Dig in that hole, aren't I? <laughs> Um, so that, that wedding proposal has really become a big deal. There are actually companies that will put together a proposal package for you, a proposal environment. And I think that's great. However, uh, I also think that that's something that we as florists could do ourselves. We don't necessarily need help. We're good at, at scheduling and planning and coordinating things. Heck, a wedding. <laughs> Talk about scheduling, planning, and coordinating. Um, so just curious, are there any of you out there that offer proposal packages? And if you do, can you kind of share what it is that you have in yours? I'm going to talk a little bit more about them, but just curious if you already have some in place. Marisa, what you got? Okay, so the question that you're asking, how many weddings um, are we predicting? Mm -hmm. Is that in the US or globally? Uh, hmm, I'm thinking it's probably just the US is what the number that I had heard. All right, so I have some numbers then. Okay. Are you ready? I'm holding on. Oh, right, All right. you should. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Um, okay, so, um, Cherie says 30 million. John says 102, excuse me, 132 million. Janet, 2.5. Rosie, 2. Kim, at least 1 million. Okay, so um, was it, uh, who were the first two? John and Cherie. Cherie. Um, I applaud your enthusiasm, but perhaps you've gone a little high. <laughs> uh, who was the fourth one down at 2.5? Janet. Janet, you're in the ballpark. What I have heard is about 2.8 million weddings this year. That's a lot of flowers, people. Get that money. Get that money. That's right, Parker, get that money. Baby likes money. Uh, that's a lot of flowers. And we are still having issues getting flowers that we want. So that's a consideration. Everybody trying to get married, it's like, Parker and I both commute on the same road every morning. It's just like that. We're all trying to get on the same freeway at the same time to get to the same place. And it's kind of a problem. So same concept with our product. Order early, plan well, and hope for the best at this point. <laughs> so what I have here that I wanted to work with first is something just kind of fun. Could be an add-on sale for... Um, could be an option for Valentine's Day also, that's just around the corner. But what I'm proposing is positioning it as part of your proposal package. And you could offer with that a corsage, a boutonniere, um, a bouquet, a centerpiece, box of chocolates. If you really felt like um, engaging your customer and doing something really over the top, you could, um, uh, you could coordinate with a venue, you could coordinate with a restaurant, you could coordinate with um, a photographer. How about that? If you work with a photographer that you just really, really love, then that might be an option to put together a package. You know, you always see those surprise proposals that only the person being proposed to is the one that's surprised because there's an entourage and a lot of photography to document that. I think that's actually kind of cool. I kind of like that. Note to self, hubs, next time, well, I'm not getting married again, but <laughs> anniversary, maybe we can work something out for that. But um, being able to put something together that helps the proposer surprise the proposee. So what I have here is kind of a fun little um, item. It's been around for many, many years, actually. And then they, uh, they being Oasis, kind of um, 
let it ride off into the sunset for a while. And hang on, sorry. Uh, then they reintroduced it a few years ago again. And it is just the cutest, tiniest little, it's like an itty bitty igloo. Okay, even smaller than the small igloo forms. And it's called a, an Oasis Mini Deco Holder. Comes in a pack of 12. They're about an inch and a half tall and two inches wide. They're not very big. They aren't going to hold a lot of product. That's fine. But what it does allow you to do, it has a peel and stick adhesive already on the back. So I don't have to fiddle futz around with uh, my glues or anything like that and I could just come right in and adhere that to the label and then there are also little tabs on it and those tabs if you wanted some extra security or the curvature wasn't give, uh, curvature of the bottle wasn't giving you enough um, adhesion you could also use ribbon and secure that but I kind of liked just the peel and stick function of it and it gives you this nifty little way to adorn a bottle of sparkling wine or champagne or regular wine, whatever suits your fancy. Um, how many of you have wine in your retail shops? How many of you either do gift baskets or have just recognized the value of being able to offer that little extra something to your customers? Go ahead and if you do, um, tell me yes and where are you located and does your state require you to have a liquor license to do that or does wine kind of fall under the radar as far as that goes just kind of curious because we get that question a lot and we know a lot of things but we don't necessarily know everything about every state so always good to, to hear a little bit more so i'm adding just a little bit of heather uh, pink heather into the design. I already had some nice long branches of the white heather. It had just some nicer um, laterals that gave some really nice extension to this little this little fella here. That's kind of cute. Let's see what else do I have to tuck in here. <laughs> Can I shout out a first timer? Oh, please do. We have, sorry if I mispronounce your lovely name, Agnieszka. Ah, oh, very good. good. First time. Agnieszka, a first timer. Is that on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, YouTubers, Marmac. Uh, Avery, if you folks are on there, give that give that newbie a, some love. Tell them we're happy to have them. Always happy to have first timers. Parker, Jim really wants you to do a close up so we can see Michelle's pretty nails. Oh. <laughs> can you go closer? <laughs> is that red or orange? It is. Oh, it, it's red. Football season's over. No more orange nails till next year. And black nails. Orange and black nails. Yep. Oh, we got some people over here welcoming them in over here on Facebook. Oh, excellent. Lovely. Well, we're always happy to have first timers, whether that means this is the first time you've spoken up or it's actually the first time you've joined us. We don't really care. We're just really happy to have you here. So are we, do we have a lot of tulips showing up today or just a lot of people that are sort of new? Yeah, no, I have a, I don't want to say a few, several over here on the Facebook side. We do have our two recent graduates with us, Beatrice and Cherie. Yay! And then we have John Wayne, Jim, Kim, Rosie, Evangeline, Roxy, David, Debbie, Lynn, Andra, Andra, Andrea, <laughs> excuse me, Andrea, Janet, Sandy, Bethany, Christy, Drake, Kathleen, Diane, Angie, and Julia. Wow. All right, guys. We have the whole family here today. I love that. Just absolutely love that. And just to pick on you a little, Marisa, at the beginning when you said we have John Wayne, is that John Wayne or John oh, and Wayne? Uh, no, <laughs> the Wayne that's going to be here on Monday. Oh, Wayne, yay, we're so excited that you're going to make it. Oh my gosh, you are going to have so much fun in the advanced class. I'm not going to tell you what you're doing, but it's awesome fun. And you get to work with teacher Marisa and myself and teacher Leanne. So, you know, looking forward to seeing you in person, bigger than that little tiny icon that we see on Facebook all the time. So something like this didn't take a lot of product. If I wasn't yapping at you at the same time, it wouldn't have taken a lot of time either. But this is definitely a nice um, way to upsell your sale of a bottled beverage. Uh, whether if you don't have a liquor license or don't want to sell wine, this is just sparkling cider. Note, in the cooler, 
the bottle will be fine and nice and chilled, but when you bring it out, the ambient air temperature is going to form condensation on the bottle. So you're going to want to make sure you wipe it down very carefully and stick the adhesive to a label, not the glass, because it's still going to fluctuate in the temperature and still sweat and um, mm, mm, it's not going to stick to your bottle. If it's red wine and you don't have to keep it in the cooler to be drinkable temperature, then you probably could get away with putting it on the bottle. Marisa and I were playing yesterday and it's like, nope, that's not working. Nope, that ain't gonna hold. So we just decided, well, it has a label. We're better off sticking it on the label at that point. So that was just my first thought is having something fun, um, a floral bottle charm, if you will. So I'm gonna set him back here. Now, if I didn't, oh, actually I'm gonna need him. So I'm gonna pull him right back. If you didn't have the, see, it works really well. If you didn't have the deco holder to work with, well, then what do you do? Well, a couple options. Some of you might be familiar with this. Anybody know what this is? I think Tammy might because they just asked something similar. Couldn't you ask, excuse me, couldn't you add an elastic band? You absolutely could use an elastic band. You could use those, um, the elastic wrist bands. The Lady Fair would work. Um, I, just, I just think the elastic looks a little cheesy and that metal um, bracket isn't as nice looking. However, ignore the label that's missing because we're gonna you know, potentially hide that. Um, this just fits nicely around the neck of the bottle. You can snug it down to the point that it doesn't pull up off the top. So that makes it very nice. So that does give you an option if you already have um, the slap bracelet corsage bases. That makes it really simple. And it's a two for one, right? because the bottle is adorned with the flower bottle charm, but upon giving it to the recipient, now that person also has, ow, those hurt. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, slap. Now, oh, slap, yeah. <laughs> now they actually have um, a wrist corsage that they can wear if they were going out to dinner or something like that. So not only would this be suitable for a proposal, but it might also be nice as an anniversary. Just something like that. Note to the hubs if you watch this tonight, just saying, and don't make me make my own flowers, okay? <laughs> so what if you don't have the deco holder or you don't have the corsage base? Now what do you do? Well, I'll give you another option, okay? You could always, actually I'll give you two options. Hello. More, 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 right? So you could just make as you would a ribbon corsage base with a large bow and your large streamers and be able to attach that onto the bottle and then glue your flowers into that. That would definitely be an option. Might not work as well to translate for um, a wearable at that point, but definitely an option. And of course, the other option would be, you know, Michelle's personal favorite. Hopefully I have some jeweler's pliers laying around here somewhere because I thought I had them. I have every other tool known to man in the studio today, but probably not the one thing that I actually really, oh, no, I see them. Hang tight. Don't wanna knock my foliage over, and I got them. So yet another option would be to create a bottle charm using Oasis aluminum wire. Yes, I know some of you have had a hard time getting supplies, but if you're at all like me, you possibly have some funky colors of it that are hanging out in your workspace that you're like, what am I gonna do with that? Well, this might be a good time to break that out and turn it into a profitable item, not a dust collector. So I'm just going to cut off a length. I don't know what I have. Less than a yard, how's that? and make sure I curl those ends over, right? Because we don't want to bleed, that's no fun. They're very sharp. <clears throat> and then just do my usual. Oh, if Jim's on, he'll be excited. I'll stomp on it for you, Jim. <laughs> I'm gonna stomp on it, Jim. Just said, like, Jim, she's gonna step on it. I am, I'm gonna stomp the snot out of this in a minute. <laughs> so I just noodled it up, wadded it up, however you like to call that. It's very organic, doesn't really have a purpose, a form other than amoebic. 
I actually wouldn't even need to stomp on it, but I'm not gonna disappoint you, I'll stomp on it. So I just have this weird, interesting shape, and now I'm gonna step on it. Crunch. What that does beyond flattening it is the pressure of you stepping on it firms up the aluminum and makes it much more rigid and much more stable and less likely to pull apart. So I'll take just another little bit here and give myself the neck chain, if you will. If you remember, um, I don't know, it's been a couple of years now, I think, I did a, a little video on how to do a floral pendant and create a neck chain. Well, it's basically what I'm gonna do here, except on a smaller scale, this neck of the bottle is standing in for the person's neck. Avery said if you get married and, or if you do an anniversary and do that, then teacher Marisa has to do your flowers. For there, that sounds like a good, de good deal to me. I'm, I'd be delighted if Misa did my flowers. Uh -huh. I'd have no complaints there. I'd be uh -huh. like, girl, you just do what you want. Ooh. <laughs> It'll probably have googly eyes in it if oh, I let sure her do that. On the back side of the side that you'd see, yep. what is that peeking at me? That is just <laughs> something special for teacher Michelle back there. <laughs> So I probably got just a titch too much, but maybe not. It'll sit down a little bit lower. So just like that, maybe give this a little twist for security. There we go. And then just slide that down around the neck of the wine bottle. If you wanted to, you could put a little pressure on the pendant portion and then um, it would curve to the bottle so it fits a little more snugly to it. But same thing here, go in with your um, Oasis floral adhesive or maybe a glue, glue strip. Blah, 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 blah. I can speak, honestly. Um, let me grab one of those actually since we've got some in the studio here. Tess said it wouldn't be a Teacher Michelle demo without her decorative wire. I know, isn't that the <laughs> truth? I kind of feel like when I don't use it, I, I don't know, I let, I let you down. Like, oh, she didn't use a wire today. So, with that in mind, you could just come in. I always like to use the U glue strip as my base. I feel it just, you know, glue sticks better to glue, right? And because the wire is open and lace-like, squishing the liquid adhesive all over it is one, messy, and two, um, just not very time effective because you're, it's like tying spaghetti in a bow. Why would you do that? Um, so doing that big base of it works really well. Then I could come in with, oh, like a salal leaf, although those are very large. Let's skip them. Uh, maybe Ruscus would be a better option. Come in with a few Ruscus leaves. And keep in mind, this could be as simple or as elaborate as you would like it to be. Michelle, yeah. which gauge wire is that aluminum wire? This is 12, 12 gauge aluminum wire. Um, the Oasis company makes it and there are a couple other um, wholesalers that have their own house brand of it as well. Uh, super malleable, it's just the regular aluminum wire. I would say 12 and then I think, is that right? Because it's really big. But yeah, 12 would be big wire. Had to double think. So this time of year, any time of year, don't we always seem to break the stems on the flowers that we like the most? When I was setting up, I snapped this poor little baby's head right off. Well, that's a perfect use for these little broken stems of mums or orchids or in this case ranunculus or 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 whatever you have especially a flat faced flower that's kind of hard to say um i'm going to use a glue dash on this guy since he's handy but all those little ones that there really isn't enough stem to even do anything with uh this is a great use for that rather than throw them in the trash take a little bit of wire take a few little bits of of well it's sticking to me more than it's sticking to anything else at the moment. Uh, but take a little bit of wire, take a few little bits of flowers, create a um, floral bottle charm, toss it on your bottle and throw it in the cooler. Somebody on their way home, no party, no occasion necessary, might decide that that's just the perfect little thing that they want. All right, so I'm gonna let that set up for a second. 
So do we have any questions or I asked a question earlier on and I don't remember besides the, oh, the proposals. Does anybody offer a proposal package? I did not get any answer for that. No proposal packages. Uh, however, however, Tammy has been chiming in. Uh -huh. um, two comments here from her. Um, they're saying, uh, okay, uh, you could just, okay, sorry. <laughs> you could just have that already made in the cooler, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't have a liquor si license and someone can just come and pick it up and add it themselves, and also a great idea for possibly Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Great. And you know, this is just your, your basic, um, hello, just your basic Mattarelli sparkling cider. There are lots of other options now. You can get um, flavored ones and fancy bottles and so forth. But yeah, being able to have these as a grab and go for people just to add on to their own item. Absolutely. Then you don't have to inventory the the wine either so that's kind of a bonus so that's a great idea michelle yes your wardy just um tried to say flat faced flower five times in a row <laughs> you notice i stopped it and slowed down and said it enunciated very clearly because it is a tongue twister flat faced flower <laughs> before we do um well at least i do i don't think marisa does she just Marisa just rolls with it. She's far more laid back than I am, but I'm over here doing like, not choir warm ups, but you know, 22 toads took a trip to Toledo trying to get Whoa. my tongue and my teeth to coordinate. And flat faced flower is one of those. <laughs> so I'm just gonna tuck a few little bits in here, but there you go. Something simple, doesn't have to be super fancy. Kind of looks like a little bow tie. Just a thought. Just trying to give you guys some ideas to capitalize on those 2.8 billion, million, trillion, what did I say? 2.8 million weddings. A billion, that would be impressive. All right, so let's move on to another fun little project. So talking about those proposal packages, talking about um, engagements, if you don't feel like you want to offer something big and fancy and over the top, that's okay. But what about something small that you could control in house? Well, I have some ideas. So I know hat boxes are kind of a love hate thing for a lot of people. Some people love to hate them. Others just love them in general. Um, I am somebody who tends to love the hat boxes, in fact. I think, especially um, around Valentine's Day, they're a very deliverable item, especially if you were to highlight these with a, um, a wire edged ribbon so it gets a little smushed. The driver can just floof up the bow and away you go, and it makes it very easy to transport. So what I have here is about an eight by eight, eight by six, I guess, eight by six hat box. Now this one uh, was purchased from a wholesaler for flowers. So it came with a liner and I'm gonna tilt this. I don't have water in it, but it doesn't fit super snugly and I don't wanna, you know, deluge Parker and the equipment over here. But um, I have a brick of foam that I've trimmed a little less than a third off and wedged it down inside with the liner. Now, because this is so tall, I could use it as a vase and, and design into it that way, but I have a different idea for you. So, what I want to use, there we are. So Michelle, while you're grabbing things, can yeah. I just ask a quick question? Sure. Um, back to your uh, little champagne wine bottle. Flower charm? Little flower charm, yes. Flower charm. I, uh -huh. I do have a few questions about this, so I felt like we had to respond. But okay. Would you use the standard pricing formula that we teach in flower school to price that out? Uh, for the, the bobble, the charm itself? Um, no, I wouldn't. Well, yes, I poten potentially would use the same pricing model. What I would adjust is my labor charge because I don't have... Even in this one, 
um, that's now stuck to the box. It holds very securely, let me tell you. Um, if I were working with this one, I had a stem of spray rose, a stem of hypericum. Whoop. Whoop. Get back in there. Um, a stem of hypericum that's running away from home. And a few little bits of, um, bits and bobs of foliage, just a few little bits of um, Italian ruscus, a few little sprays of the heather. So materials wise, I have very, very little product in there. And the um, deco holder itself isn't terribly expensive. They come in a pack of 12. So cost divided by 12 tells you what each one is. Um, I would still use the formula, but I would certainly increase my labor charge. Um, we talked about this in class yesterday. We were doing pricing segments and pricing, uh, doing designing to a price point. And um, no, I would actually probably have uh, a considerably higher labor charge. Not so much because it was difficult, but in our industry, that's how we tend to increase the cost of something. And um, I feel it would be unique to have in the shop, something that might be some a little different to offer. So people are paying you for your cleverness and your technical knowledge on how to mechanically affix that to the bottle. And that's what they're paying for mo more so than the product in it is the really long answer to your question, which was a great question, by the way. Thank you. Keep those questions coming. Hit us up. You got us for, you know, at least another half an hour or so. So fire away, guys. All right. So in that case, <laughs> well, this isn't necessarily a question. Um, shout out to Diane because um, she's never thought about proposal packages. Oh. However, bridal showers, of course. But it looks like she's ready to put them on the uh, on her website and see how it goes. Well, good. You know, you don't know if it's going to work until you try it. And the beauty of having a website is you can um, you can try something. And if it doesn't work, no harm, no foul. You've offered the customer an option. And I think that sometimes just stepping out of our comfort zone and doing that makes a huge difference. So I had that brick of foam. I still need to go shorter, my goodness. Is, is that not the most amazing hydrangea? So big, so happy. So what I'm doing is leaving it long. I'd like its head to be just shorter still just a little bit below the top of the box when it is closed because I want to be able to put the lid on. So you see it just fills into that center section there. And then I'm working with blues. There's some here in you. And I want to tuck a few little bits of eurygium in there. We got in the most dinosaur-like uh, eurygium this week. It is not only big uh, bloom-wise, but it was... I think I had it last week and showed them. Did you? It was enormous. massive and just absolutely huge, which is fantastic. But if you're trying to do a small bouquet, it gets a little crazy. So I want to um, just tuck a couple different blue flowers in here for texture. So I'm going to feed them through my hydrangea using it kind of as a mechanic, although there is foam in there. Um, I don't want it to be overpowering, but just a little bit. And you could, you could do the same thing with roses or carnations or something like that. You could do a pave in there of your materials. That would be perfectly fine. I just wanted to do the hydrangea because one stem filled it up completely. Maybe, maybe one more because they're so pretty. And then I have some blue iris. Everyone's concerned you didn't dip that hydrangea. Oh I my gosh, I know. Why didn't you use alum? Uh, because I forgot to pull it out. That's why I didn't use alum. Do you, well, you should. Do you I want, should. Do you need to, though? I don't necessarily need to use alum, no. If my hydrangea is well hydrated, I don't have to use it. It's, it's an option, and I think it's one that can make your flowers last a little bit longer, uh, the hydrangea specifically, because it does help it uptake water. But um, no no nefarious plan as to why I didn't use 
use that. I just I just forgot to grab the alum, and you saw me trying to find the wire and things back here. There, we got a lot going on behind me, so I decided not to not to dig for it. So I'll tuck just a just maybe one iris in here. The hydrangea really does such a lovely job of filling in this box. Oh, he's going to be just a little tall. Ooh, Debbie had a good idea. She's saying she made a breakout bouquet for the workers at her father's nursing home and suggested it would be a good idea for a bridal tea as well. Oh, absolutely. What a great idea. A breakout or a breakaway bouquet? Yeah, that would be very fun. Oh, maybe one more. Can you explain what that is? What's a breakaway bouquet? So a breakaway bouquet is when you might have um, multiple small centerpieces or arrangements or um, little hand-tied bouquets or something. And you, at the end of the event, uh, you would break the centerpiece apart. So all of the pieces together make one, but then everybody would take a portion of it. If you were doing it as a toss bouquet for a wedding, it could be individual flowers. Um, so I'll show you how I have done them in the past. I have uh, ribbon, um, double face satin ribbon that is imprinted with my shop name and website. And I offer the toss bouquet, the um, standard, by my company toss bouquet of a specific flower it's usually a rose that coordinates with the wedding colors on each stem is tied a ribbon i tie a bow just a shoestring bow and that's the imprinted ribbon with my shop name and the website and then all of those are combined into a little hand tied um, bouquet and then tied with another little bit of ribbon and that might sit next to the sweetheart table or wherever the bride and groom are sitting and then when it's time to do the toss that's the bouquet the bride would grab untie the one ribbon that holds them all together and then when she tosses the bouquet over her head the um, it breaks apart and all the individual roses go out so instead of having that you know, war of the worlds for somebody diving for one bouquet. There are a multiple of them. And it's actually a really cool shot for the photographer because the rose fly, the rose is flying through the air with the streamers. It can, you know, you have to tell the photographer what's happening so that they're positioned right. But it can be just a really awesome photograph for the album. Yeah, Marisa. Okay. I have two questions for the tulip people out there. Okay. And then maybe, Michelle, you can give your input later. Okay. Okay, so one, if uh, your container doesn't come with that liner, uh -huh. what could you use? Okay. And I like this question. Um, where did it go? Oh, okay. And then Angie says, um, they're always cautious about the box getting wet underneath while working. Does anyone have a tip for it not to get wet? Okay, so I'm gonna start with that one. If you mean by not get wet, I don't know if you mean under the box while I'm working on the table, or if you mean between the liner and the box. Oh. So if you're talking about working on the table, I would probably make sure that I had it elevated on something with a towel under it maybe, and just be cautious of the water that you're spilling. Um, if it's about water between the liner and the box, I could see where you might have a concern with that. Um, if the box came with a liner, it should be one that's appropriately sized. This one, the liner ends just right below my fingers here. So I could literally have uh, put floral netting or um, addition, more foam into the bottom and just designed into this in a, a radial bouquet. Um, I'm going to hold off on answering the other question about what if it didn't come with a liner for just a minute because I have something for you. Of course I have something for you. Hello. Um, so I'll turn this so you can get kind of a peek at it. So I just have blue flowers, just a little bit of blue in there. And whoever it was that said, well, wouldn't we teacher Michelle if we didn't have wire, right? Okay. So I have silver wire. Oh, wait, there's a little bit of gold. Even better. Better, 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 more better. So I have a little bit of the same wire. It's the um, Oasis aluminum wire in that 12 gauge, which coordinates with my, my hat box a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is make my own 
Well, if I tell you what it is, then you'll know. Anybody know what I'm gonna do with this wire? Let's try that. Anybody have an idea what I'm gonna do with the wire? I'm going to coil it on one end. Make the wedding ring. Oh, whoa, oh. Whoa. no, <laughs> but, hmm. Yeah, that, you know, from a proposal standpoint, a flower ring would be okay, but that wouldn't that wouldn't cut it for me for the long term. <laughs> oh my gosh, so how cute! You can actually, yeah, make like a flower ring to oh, put inside. You could absolutely do that. Um, Leanne had. We were talking about it, and uh, she brought in something for me. So we're going to talk a little bit about some options of what you could put in there. But a flower ring would be fantastic. Could you lower that so I can get a close-up of you doing that little spiral? Sure. Perfecto. So when you get to this point, you can come in and do it with your hands as well. All right. So, so far, Michelle, we have actually a couple. Okay. Um, using it to hold the lid. Okay. Or a handle. Okay. So whoever said hold the lid is pretty darn close. A lot of people are thinking that you're also making a heart a lot. Oh, I'm not making a heart, but I could have. A heart would have been really clever, but not today, people. Not today. You're getting a spiral. <laughs> so, flowers were what color? Blue. And what I've made is a little card holder. So I have this cute little card holder. And Parker, I'm going to turn it around to you. Is that the cannon that's up here? Is that the one yeah. you can do a close-up? I'll be able to see it when it's down there, yeah. Can you all read what that says? I think you'll be able to read it. It said, without you, I'd be blue. Will you marry me? Oh, so cute. So I'm going to tuck that down into the center of the hydrangea. And using that little spiral, just it gives it some tension. So when the lid's on, it's down. But when you take it off, it does pop up a little bit and give you um, kind of this effect. If you can see that very well. I don't want to knock everything over. But then what I would do is put the lid on and then tie it with a pretty blue bow. Marisa brought me some gorgeous blue ribbon. And here's a nice, nice brand new bolt. So somebody suggested, oh, you could put a flower ring in there. You could absolutely put a flower ring in there. That would be great. Um, you could put do you remember the rock candy rings? It's like the big sucker that looks like a diamond. Oh, 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 oh. If, yeah, a ring pop. That's what it is. So if, you, if you're if you a play, playful couple or the couple's playful and they would think that that was humorous, not cheap, uh, that would be super fun. Um, I would totally love that. Yeah, it would be so awesome. <laughs> you could put a faux, just a cocktail ring, something fun in there and do the same kind of thing. Work with your... Um, Oasis aluminum wire. It's so bendable, you could create a little, um, actually you could do a spiral and just poke the center down like a cone and then nestle a sparkly ring in there. I would caution against doing the actual wedding ring unless you prepared this and gave it to the person proposing. Um, I would not want the responsibility of having somebody's engagement ring in my possession Mm -mm. that's just no no thank you uh, so then you could come back and tie a beautiful bow on the top but my thought with this was if you prepared it with the bottle of wine or champagne and the adornment that was on the slap bracelet then the person has something to wear then if they also had a present for the recipient that's where this would come in. So you would have this interesting present as well as, now I would want to secure this on the bottom if I were tying it up as one item like this. I would be more inclined to um, tie the bow and attach it just to the lid with you glue dashes, but this is more for demonstration purposes, just an illustration of things. <coughs> Oh my goodness, Teacher Michelle cannot tie a bow today. It's just like oh, your shoe. It's slippery. It is slippery. Are you wearing slip-ons today? So. There we go. I am. <laughs> that is true. 
at least it's not Velcro yet, so I'm good. <laughs> so I might have a bow on the top or have done um, the bow attached to the lid such that when the person gives the gift and they say, oh my gosh, this is fantastic, and they open it and they take the lid off and they see, oh my gosh, without you, I'd be blue, will you marry me? And while the recipient is focused on this, that gives the person proposing time to whip out the real ring in the box, do the down on one knee thing. And if you had a photographer there, it's all captured on film. So just a thought, that's the front end of things. That's the proposal things. Um, I have a couple friends that offer different levels of proposal packages from something as simple as uh, just an arrangement of flowers to things more elaborate that they can actually customize for the individuals. And um, they find not only is it a nice sale item, it's also a great entree into actually getting them for the wedding, booking the wedding as well. So just an idea. I love it, Michelle. Good, I'm glad. So one of the questions was, what happens if you don't have a liner in the box or you find a really awesome heart-shaped box or something like that, but it's not watertight and you can't quite get a liner to fit? It is an issue. It can be a challenge. But I have an idea for you, if I can get the lid off. So I know you have heard um, me talk about before using Flex Seal to make things watertight. I remembered to bring the can in today to show you because I usually can't remember the name of it. But this happens to be the black in, of the Flex Seal. It also has white and gray. And what I've done is I took, and you've seen this hat box before, we have a big one and a small one. Um, I took painter's tape, so either the blue or the green tape that we do, you would use to mask a surface off before you painted, like a win around a window. And I masked off, Parker, I don't know if you'll be able to see the, the difference yeah, here, so. but I'll tilt it a little. But um, I masked off the part I did not want to coat with the rubber spray sealant. And then I did two light coats. You have to let them dry in between. But I did two light coats in there. And it comes up the side about that far. So it's about the same height as a, um, as a designer tray. Sometimes you have the black ones or the clear ones or the white ones. And I have made the inside of that watertight. So now I could take my foam, in this case foam, and cut a very short layer to place into the bottom snugly. I would cover the whole, if this were the bottom of the, um, bottom of the uh, hat box, goodness, uh, then I would just cut a short layer that goes wall to wall. Then I could choose to pave my flowers inside and have it very, very low with inside the container. Um, that would be also a great way to do a pave of roses and then maybe leave a space where the um, ring in the box could be set down inside, kind of snugly in the middle of those roses. That's an option. But um, if you wanted to use this whole container to do a full out of the box arrangement, I would probably just make sure I was taping just a small bit around the edge of the top of the box and over the outside. And then I would coat the whole inside, especially since um, this product comes in, in black, white, and gray. That's going to cover most of the interiors of containers that we have. This is black and it pretty much just blends right in. If if the inside were white and you only had black, I still don't see that as being an issue. If you have a nice um, tape off line of the painter's tape and you paint the whole inside the same color, it's still going to look planned and uniform. And um, I just think it's awesome. It gives you lots of options with containers that may not be designed for the floral trade with a liner built to fit. Um, and, you know, we're, we're experiencing supply issues, getting what we want, what we're used to working with, and we're having to think outside the box. So think outside of the box and think in the hardware store aisle and just come up with some creative ways to use what you have, but maybe in a new way. So that's just another tip and thought for you. 
Brian over here wanted to know how to figure out pricing something like the hat box. Well, you're going to want to do your standard pricing, you know, standard pricing formula. And again, you may um, you may have to adjust your um, your uh, your profit in it by changing your labor percentage. Um, you could offer different levels, a, a good, better, best, if you will. I know Leanne talked about that at Valentine's Day where she used the larger hat box and the, the bunches of Valentine's love. We've got a, uh, she has a great video on, was that, was that a video, Parker, or was that live? Yeah, that's it was cool, like last week. Yeah, okay. It's been a long month already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what day it is. It's Wednesday. Um, but that would be a great way to approach it, a good, better, best kind of option. But um, again, you're probably wanting to charge a little bit higher um, labor charge because what you're doing is unusual. You know, you should be compensated for your creativity and your technical knowledge and your professional mechanics. So good question. So piggybacking on that, Michelle, real quick. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, Rock, Rosie and Bethany sort of have similar comments. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it was Cherie. I'm sorry. So Cherie says, think outside of the box, but insert your flowers inside of the box. Yeah, I like that. That's very good. And then Bethany also says, having these ideas could really help the customer, especially with a lot of people don't really know where to start when they're proposing. Oh my gosh, absolutely. They, they found their person, then what, right? You know, there, like I said, there are companies that, that do that, but honestly, I think if you were able to put um, some kind of little package together and put that on your website, that gives you the option to engage with that wedding, potential wedding customer a little earlier in the process. Um, if you're feeling like your wedding skills could use a little brush up, uh, we offer currently three different courses that are specifically targeted to weddings and wedding work. We have bouquets to carry, flowers to wear, and the latest one that came out last fall is the ceremony flowers. And currently we're working on the reception flowers. <sighs> Not going to tell you when it's coming, but it's going to be so good. You're going to love it. But um those are online courses that you could easily work on and complete before wedding season. And the neat thing about those is because you take pictures of your work and you submit them to us for um, Teacher Carolyn or Teacher Marisa or myself to review, evaluate, give you some tips on what you can work on, you also end up with photos for your website. You're creating your own collateral at that point. So even though you may not have taken the class yet or done the wedding, once you complete the class, you have examples of work that you have done that you can use to promote yourself. So, you know, try it. Worst thing that happens is nobody buys one and you take it off the website and move on. It's not a crisis at that point. Um, if you need wedding inspiration, we have um, some new Pinterest boards that are wedding centric. Susie just got a couple of those done and they're just fantastic uh, like candy for your eyes just options to get you thinking about wedding season uh, a jumping off point for your own creativity so um, Caledonia and Susie and maybe um, Carolyn if you've got it handy if you wouldn't mind putting a link to our Pinterest boards in there as well so if anybody's interested they can just pop right over and look at them um, and then if you go to our YouTube channel, we have lots and lots of instructional videos on wedding related things. It may not say wedding centerpiece, but Leanne just did an awesome uh, video on an elevated centerpiece that is totally scalable. You could do more flowers, more product in it and make it larger and it could become a wedding centerpiece. So lots and lots of options for you this time of year. So I thought I would just put together a beautiful, beautiful, well, at least I hope it turns out beautiful, uh, hand-tied bouquet as we talk about um, just wedding things in general. Uh, aren't, these, aren't these amazing? These are Garden Roses from Garden Roses Direct. We had a shipment come in 
I don't know, a week or so ago. Mm-hmm. And um, Marisa and I are like, uh, those are mine. No, those are mine. No, those are mine. No, those are mine. I'm trying to pick dibs on it. And Leanne's like, no, they're mine. And you can have what's left over. So <laughs> as you know, with garden roses, you need to bring them in earlier so that they have time to open. Um, but did you have a question, Marisa? I do. I thought you were stretching and then your hand didn't go down. Okay. <laughs> um, I have two questions. Okay. Um, Rosie wants to know where they can learn the arch decor. Okay. And then Robin wants to know if, if there's a way to get a reduced size of fatsia leaves to color a bouquet. She keeps finding big ones. Big monsters. Okay, so the first question was... Um, where to learn the arch. Where to learn the arch, yes. So in our wedding floral specialist course uh, ceremony flowers, we have, um, we have a, an arch option in there. We have some suspended items there. And um, they're pretty, pretty unique. Uh, I know we have some of you that are in the course currently, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to spill the beans on that, but um, we do have that. And then in our upcoming um, reception design, we'll have some elevated things. They're not really arches, but the mechanic that we're going to show you could be recreated on a larger scale to give you an arch. Absolutely. And then what was the other question, Marisa? Sorry. No, it's okay. (laughs) It's how we get... um like more um, like scalable fatsia to like put underneath. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be uh, just a request to your, your wholesaler. Um, you know, we have some smaller ones here for collaring the bouquet. We also have some monster ones out in the warehouse that are, you know, they're this big around. Obviously much, much too large for uh, bouquet work, but nicely sized if you were doing um, an arch. There you go. (laughs) So with all these weddings that are happening this year, and as we move into um, wedding season, right now we're in proposal season, if you will, Pretty much Thanksgiving to Valentine's Day is the number one time of year, the biggest time of year where the most proposals happen. People are gathering with family, there are holidays, um, it's a festive gift giving time of year, you roll into Valentine's Day, it's a romantic time of year. So you really just start to see a lot of proposals happening. Uh, People that got married during lockdown or during the COVID uh, restrictions on gatherings and so forth, they might be ready to do a wediversary or a weddingversary. They did that little Zoom wedding, but now they're ready to do the full meal deal with a reception and people. Um, If you did their elopement bouquet or their Zoom wedding or something like that, reach out to them. See if they're planning to do um, a gathering, do a social gathering of some kind, and reconnect with those customers. Quite often with wedding customers, we don't get that repeat business because it can be a one and done, although you hope that they continue to buy through, buy flowers from you during their whole life and, and choose you as their florist. But don't be, don't be shy about reaching out and seeing if they're interested in, in having flowers for that next celebration. Marisa, do you have a question? Yeah, I okay. do. Um, for Dustin. So Dustin is new to being a florist. Uh-huh. And where did it go? And um, worked in, a, in the floral department at a grocery store, but was not learning very much. Uh-huh. Um, do we offer basic floral design classes? We do. We offer basic floral design classes as well as um, the advanced course. And then we also have our advanced uh, our advanced class in the classroom. Um, so yes, we offer a full complement of those. So if Caledonia and Susie could tuck a link up there for him on the basic course, that would be wonderful. 
Um, we have students in the classroom, whoops, getting away from me. We have students in the classroom right now that are in the basic course. They're in their, their final week. They do um, one of their exams tomorrow. So they're a little nervous at the moment, but they're doing a great job and having a lot of fun. There are too many of them, otherwise we would have brought them in um, for live today, but it's a big class, so we're keeping them out there. Teacher Leanne, Leanne is Teacher Leanne today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna finish this up off camera and we'll have some pictures for you, but we just really wanted, um, wanted to have a conversation about what's possible as you roll through proposal season, give you some ideas on some different kinds of things that you might be able to implement in your shop or your studio, depending on how you work. Um, I'm going to keep playing with these fun, fun roses from Garden Roses Direct. But if you enjoyed today, give it a thumbs up, give it, uh, give it some love. If there's somebody you know that might benefit from seeing what we talked about today. Maybe you found a tip and a trick that was particularly useful. Give us a share, we would really love that. And as you go through proposal season, um, be sure to take pictures of what you do, especially when you get to wedding season, and tag Floral Design Institute as you do that. We would love to see what beauty you can create as you do something you love. Have a great day.